This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. It is Wednesday, May 8th, and we are actually getting the show in today. Yesterday was a train wreck, a disaster, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure a lot of you are getting ready to go home from your jobs. I appreciate you hanging out and checking out the show for the last 10 minutes of the day. Here's what we got going on today. By the way, this is Winning Cures Everything. We do this every day for 10 to 20 minutes. Nothing too crazy. We go over the day's sports topics, and uh, and I give my opinions on them. And I give you some daily picks in case you want to gamble on the evening's games. Here's what we got today. CBS has ranked the top 25 college football coaches. I tell you where they got them wrong. Clay Thompson is mad about his role on the Warriors. Saban... That's right, Nick Saban predicts Game of Thrones, and I got your daily picks. You can follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. You can follow the show, at Winning Cures. BetNow.eu sponsors the show. Go check them out, BetNow.eu in your browser. You can use code WINNING50 for a 50% deposit bonus. Incredible online sportsbook. They got good stuff over there. Go check them out for yourself. Uh, betnow.eu, use promo code WINNING50. Let's jump into it. CBS has ranked the top 25 Power 5 football coaches. We'll start from the top. We'll go from there. Number 25, they got Scott Frost. Went 4-8 and eight in his first season, but remember this is a guy that took UCF from an 0-12 record to a 6-6 and six record to a 13-0 and 0 record and a mythical national championship. In his first year at Nebraska, he had a lot to work off of. Nobody thought he'd step in and win 10 games immediately. 25 works for me. Number 24, Gus Malzahn. Uh, okay. I mean, Malzahn's good. Uh, he can he, he gets recruits in. He's He doesn't always win consistently, but he's going to have you a winning record every year. That's the way it goes. Uh, number 23, Paul Christ of Wisconsin. Uh, look, he went 34-7 and seven in his first three seasons. I can get that. Uh, Iowa's Kirk Ferentz. Seems a little low on this list, but he's always average, right? I can get down with that. Uh, Duke, David Cutcliffe at 21. If you're talking about just a guy that can do X's and O's, etc., what he's done at Duke is just other-level kind of stuff. I feel like he should probably be higher. Number 20, another one that should be higher, Mike Leach at Washington State. 20 seems low for him. Matt Campbell at 19 from Iowa State. It, why would you not toss Cutcliffe and Leach over him? Because they've been doing it longer. Matt Campbell has had two good years at Iowa State. He was pretty good at Toledo, but we haven't seen him do it on a consistent level for a long amount of time. I would move Campbell back. Kyle Whittingham at Utah, another guy that uh, you put him in a, a bigger situation, a bigger job, probably going to be even more successful and – I mean, there's no disputing what Utah has done, even since they got into the Pac-12. Uh, Tom Herman, number 17. Okay. You know, he, he was a coach for two years at Houston, uh, coach for two years at Texas. Okay. Or, sorry, three years at Houston, two years at Texas. Number 16, Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern. Okay, I can get down with that. Number 15, Jim Harbaugh at Michigan. Number 14, Chip Kelly at UCLA. I'd probably move him down this list. Uh, or further back, but, eh, I mean, okay. What he did at Oregon is crazy. UCLA, it's going to take some time to build up. We'll go from there. Mark D'Antonio from Michigan State is 13. He had a bad year last year, had a bad year uh, three seasons ago. Other than that, he's won at a high, high level. No, not national championship level, but do you expect to do that at Michigan State? Mike Gundy at 12. I think people are catching up to Gundy. We'll see. Uh, I feel like he hit his peak in 2012. I might would have moved him back. James Franklin at 11. Okay. I, I can get okay with that. I mean, that's the highest ranked Big Ten coach. Number 10, Dan Mullen. Uh, what He turned around Florida quickly. What he did at Mississippi State was uncanny. Uh, number 9 is David Shaw at Stanford. I like, I like David Shaw a lot, uh, but he has – consistently gotten a little bit worse through the years as he's gotten away from Harbaugh's bunch. So we'll see if he can bring it back, but I don't know, man. He's 
I, David Shaw, I might would move back here. Gary Patterson at TCU at number eight. Okay, okay, I like that. Gary Patterson, I like him. I uh, I think he would do big things. I mean, he wins eleven or twelve games uh, in in certain seasons when when he's built up a team, right? So I can get down with Patterson at eight. Brian Kelly at seven. It's crazy what uh, a college football playoff appearance can do for your reputation. Remember, three years ago, this guy went four and eight, and then went ten and three last year. Collapsed at the end of the season. And then you know, last year, of course, he goes to the college football playoff. He gets smoked by Clemson, but I feel like everybody was going to get smoked by Clemson last year. I, Brian Kelly's a good coach. He knows X's and O's. He knows how to recruit. I, I think he's. Uh, I think he's good at seven. Kirby Smart at six, I think I would probably move him back. Uh, but if you include recruiting, which is a big part of college football, you gotta have you gotta have Kirby Smart in there. Number five, Jimbo Fisher. Okay, uh, he's won a national championship, so you gotta toss him up there somewhere. I think he helped change the culture at Texas A and M right off the bat. So I like Jimbo at five. Number four, they've got Lincoln Riley. I'm probably going to move Riley back if I were them. He's had two years, and he he had everything laid out for him. Big Game Bob left the cupboard fully stocked, and then he left money for pizza and beer too. I mean, he, he had everything in place for Lincoln Riley, along with two absolutely outstanding quarterbacks. Both won the Heisman. Both went number one in the NFL draft. We'll see what he does over the next couple of years. I think that four might be a little high for a guy that's only gone through two seasons. But he has made the college football playoff both seasons. He has not won a game there. Um, But he's in a weaker conference. I think I'd probably move him back. Chris Peterson at three, I like that. What he did at Boise, you can't dispute that. And what he's done at Washington. I mean, he took him to a college football playoff. He's uh, he's won multiple Pac-12 championships. I like Peterson here. He knows his role. He knows what he's doing. He understands how to win out there. Number two, Dabo Sweeney. Uh, he's beaten Saban two out of the last three, so if you wanted to put him one, okay. It just depends on what your criteria are. Is it right now? Is it uh, all time? Is it, you know, what's what are we looking for? Uh, number one, Saban. So Saban and Dabo, 1A, 1B, whatever you want to call it, both of those guys are fantastic. Go read it over at CBS Sports. Good, good stuff there. I was a little surprised they did not have Jeff Brom in the top 25. They didn't have Gino, uh, Dino Babers. They didn't have Bronco Mendenhall. You know, I, it, it, Mac Brown, I'm not going to toss him in. Justin Fuente, eh, didn't didn't look great last week or last year. Uh, other than that, yeah, I think, uh, I think top 25 is okay. I might want to rearrange the order some, but there you go. Next topic, Clay Thompson is... Pissed off. Stephen A. Smith shared this on First Take. He said, I'm not speaking about opinion here. I got this from a few people. I'm told Clay Thompson, and I'm not talking to Clay, so in fairness to him, let me be clear about that. I'm told he is not happy. His number has not been called nearly enough. He's tired of sitting around and getting, this is a quote, the crumbs left behind by other people. So, basically... Clay Thompson is mad because he is not treated as an equal with Kevin Durant and Steph Curry. And I get it. I totally get it. Uh, when it was just Steph and you, y'all were the Splash Brothers. And now you got Kevin Durant scoring 40 a night is what it is. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen tonight. I think the Warriors end up winning the game this evening. But there is some... Major league stuff coming out about that Warriors franchise. Might be a few too many egos. Few too many egos. It would not surprise me to see the Warriors lose Clay Thompson and Kevin Durant this offseason. We'll see, though. We'll see what happens. Next up, next topic. Nick Saban watches Game of Thrones. So he was on WJOX in Birmingham. They were doing the Regents Pro-Am today. And... He said that he watches every Sunday. This is his quote. He said, oh, I love it. I mean, it had to come to this. Somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to lose. That's the way it always goes. Everybody has probably got somebody that they're rooting for, 
which is how it goes too. It'll be interesting to see how it winds up. He was then asked to predict how he thinks the show will end when the finale airs in less than two weeks. I don't know, he says. I think in some kind of way, Jon Snow is going to wiggle his way in there even though he won't try. It'll just end up that way. Does that not sound exactly like what Alabama has done every year under Saban? Somehow they always find a way to get into the national championship game, into the college football playoff. They always find a way to get there. They are the favorites. It's not surprising that Saban would be a fan of the favorite on the show. Now, he's watched it long enough, I would imagine, to understand that that's not typically how Game of Thrones works, but they do have TV executives that are writing it at this point. So with George R. R. Martin, anybody could be killed off at any point. Now that they've got other guys running the show, all of your favorite characters have remained through uh, this season. We'll see what happens in the last two episodes. But uh, but the fact that Saban is a Jon Snow fan should pretty much surprise nobody. All right, I got a few daily picks for you. We did not have any yesterday. I ran out of time. Here's what we got tonight. Big, big, big play. I'm doing 200 bucks on Milwaukee and Golden State money line parlay for tonight. It's minus 142, so 200 to win 140, uh, 140 and some change. I got the Twins first five money line at the Blue Jays. I got Astros Royals over nine. I've got Giants at Rockies no score in the first inning, and I've got the Astros minus half a run in the first five against the Royals. I think the Astros are going to put up a bunch of runs tonight. Uh, so go and check that out over at winningcureseverything.com. You can go up to the navigation bar and click on gambling picks. You can find everything from every every pick that we've ever done, going all the way back to 2016. Every pick that we've ever done is going to be up there, but you can check out my weekly picks there, see what I've done over the last three weeks, uh, see where I have made my mistakes, see where I have won big, and then go from there. Uh, as always, we appreciate you guys checking out the show. We know it was late today. It, it's typically late. That's what it's turning into anyway. Hopefully, we'll get back to a regular routine of about 3 p.m. Central. But so far, right now, it's after 5 o'clock. I'm sure you're ready to go home. I'm ready to go home. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.